Um, hi, it's me, the guy who's trying something new out by wearing a cardigan, but he's really nervous about it, so please be nice. The family vlog is a phenomenon that's emerged in the past decade that I think most people have accepted is pretty morally dicey. Not only is broadcasting your children's most formative years to millions of internet strangers a disgusting invasion of privacy, but also it exists in way too much of a gray area in terms of child labor laws. Like, you're technically financially dependent on your kids because it's their appearance in the videos that makes them so popular. And that just doesn't seem like a great situation to be in. Hey kiddo, you better up the cuteness, all right? Craft some more of those sassy one-liners. You wanna eat this month, don't you? But I think the biggest problem surrounding family vloggers is just that they're thinking too small. Why limit yourself to financially exploiting your kids via a 30-minute vlog when you can put them in a feature-length film? Well, The Terrible Adventure, a movie from 2021 that I found on YouTube, does exactly that. The protagonists of this film are Olivia and Jackson Johnson, played by actors Olivia and Jackson Thompson. I can only assume they changed their last name so that it doesn't reflect badly on the actors when their characters commit several horrific war crimes in the movie's third act. But using my detective skills, I saw that these child actors have the same last name as the movie's writer-director Kel Thompson and are probably his kids. And you know, it does seem like they had fun making this, but also, if their dad made money off of it, it's dicey. It's dicey. Also, this movie weirdly has an anti-climate change message. I'm sure this'll be what kicks humanity into gear and gets us to save the planet, an obscure low-budget children's movie. Not that low-budget, though. They do end up in an airplane at one point. Now, I suspect this might have a slightly different feel than some of my other videos. This movie is so absurd that making fun of it almost feels moot, like pointing out plot holes in a melatonin dream. But still, I just, I feel I need to show the world this movie. I, I can't be alone in having experienced this. So it opens with a quote from Climate Act activist Greta Thunberg, bold, before transitioning to a shot of a girl putting her shoes on that's way too long. We then meet siblings Olivia and Jackson who are jumping into laundry piles and piloting drones over the ocean respectively, when their fictional dad, Brad, calls down Olivia for school. Olivia! We have to get out the door! I don't want you to be late on your last day of school! Okay! I hope you didn't leave a mess. And there's something off to me about this actor. He looks almost 3D printed, like a wax figure of Jeff Kinney. Hey, this guy looks like this other guy! I'm a comedian! But we discover their family's been having financial trouble since their mother divorced him. And with the divorce, probably gonna lose the house too. What? Uh, don't worry about that. That's for me to worry about. And if you have a keen ear, you might have picked up on the fact that all the dialogue has been dubbed over in post for some reason. And it's like that the whole movie, which really adds to the overall unsettling vibe. Like, I understand replacing some dialogue that might not have been captured well on set, but why the whole ass thing? We cut to a man on the street who's passed by a busted down ice cream truck with a help wanted sign on it that he chases down to ask the driver for a job. Hey, can I help you? Yeah, I'm here for the job. Come around the back into my office, will you? Right around the back. Before transitioning back to Olivia being sent off to school by Brad when her mom, Janet, shows up with her new boyfriend and starts angrily throwing things at her ex-husband. What's going on? And this piece of junk that your sister gave us? It's the cheapest piece of crap. Hi, honey. Hi, mom. Get it away! No, I'm just kidding. Meanwhile, Jackson is hassled by a park ranger because his drone is apparently toxic to the environment. That drone, if that drone crashes into the water, it'll be spilling toxic chemicals into the water for over 75 years, long after we're both dead. He diverts the ranger when Olivia swings by to get him for school. Now, uh, full transparency, I was a little stoned when I first found this movie. So I'm gonna need you to imagine what it would be like to watch this next part blasted because that was my experience. Do this. Come on, kids, the world needs saving. We got no time for misbehaving. Got 
gotta be smart and use our brains and fix the whole world cause it's time to change it it's up to us the kids to do it we got the power it's time to use it the future is up to us to choose it if we choose wrong then we might just lose it so grab your coat cause it's time to go on a terrible adventure from coast to coast taking planes and boats even trains in motion do whatever it takes just to save the ocean the land the people the animals the air march right in the office of a billionaire what's up mr branson what was that and who's mr branson what's up mr branson hey wanna hunt your muncher kind of sells itself don't you think what's your name anyway juan you don't look like a juan my dad was from cuba my mom idaho like one two three <laughs> Juan Jose Francisco Gonzalez Dos Santos De La Riviera. Really? Junior. <laughs> it was my dad's name. Hey, is it always this chili in here? Chili? Juan Jose Francisco Luis Gonzalez Dos Tacos? Rice and beans? Queso gringo loco. Is it chili? We sell ice cream. That's what I'm gonna name you. Chili Chili. Okay. So another thing about this movie, I suspect that some of it was written by AI because there are some scenes like this one that just make no sense. Like you shouldn't use AI to write things for you, but if you do, at least rewrite some of the dialogue to make it more cohesive. Like the actors were probably all, hey, this dialogue that you want me to say makes uh, zero sense, so can I uh, change it a little? No, chat GBT, I mean, I wrote it that way for a reason, so that's how you're gonna say it. Are you sure that you wanna commit this hard? Because later in the script, it says that you're gonna need a plane. Then I'm gonna get a plane, Santo. The guy who plays the ice cream man, his name is Santo. I'm all about authenticity here. So Chili is hired. And we're then introduced to this movie's needlessly convoluted plot, which I'm gonna try and break down for you. Okay, so this guy, Iceman, works for a company called Huncha Muncha Ice Cream, which is owned by a billionaire named Billy Bob Branson. Howdy, I'm Billy Bob Branson. I just realized that's who Mr. Branson is. What up, Mr. Branson? What's up, Mr. Branson? It's him. So, I guess this movie actually does make a lot of sense. Who is concerned about the environment. So, he's holding a contest designed to help locate the smartest people in the world where math and science riddles are printed inside his ice cream sandwich wrappers. Solving them will send players on a scavenger hunt, and the first to complete it will be rewarded a million dollars. Iceman and Chili plan to trick a kid into solving one of the questions for them in order to win the contest themselves. Battery's almost dead. We got a mouse problem! The internet every time there's a Disney movie with a black person in it? In class, Olivia's teacher reads from a book titled Could, Would, and Should. Your assignment is to reread Should, Could, and Would, the award-winning kids' educational book about entrepreneurship. A real-life children's book about entrepreneurship written by, among others, this movie's director, Kel Thompson. I mean, hey, that airplane later, it's not gonna pay for itself! Olivia buys a sandwich from Chili and Iceman, and they bait her into answering the question on the wrapper. And I'm pretty sure what he says here is supposed to be an analogy for how some people treat Greta Thunberg's climate activism. It's like a one in a million chance. Even adults can't solve it. There's no way a dumb little girl will. Go ahead, little girl. Show my boss you're a loser. Stupid. It's a weird choice. Olivia solves it, but Chili types in the answer and drives away before she can see the next clue. At home, her and Jackson discuss how to get her winning ticket back. What are you reading? Should couldn't wait for the summer report. It's a classic children's book about three gnomes who had a beat up old house. Really? A classic children's book? Hey, all right, Cal, let's not sprain a wrist jerking herself off, all right? Jackson has the idea to attach a walkie to his drone and fly it to the ice cream truck. Get out of here! You got you the count of three. One. I two, almost got 
Imagine he shoots him in the head, the movie suddenly becomes super violent. No, they use a smoke bomb to steal it back and go home to submit the first answer and get the first location clue. Which Olivia deters is referring to Clewiston, Florida. Later, Chili and Iceman realize the kids are home alone while their dad's at a job interview. And they try to break in to steal the ticket back, but Jackson stops them by electrifying the front doorknob. <laughs> Man, kids using contraptions to humorously stop a pair of bumbling criminals from breaking into their house while their parents aren't home? I retract my accusations. Surely only a real human mind could have crafted something so original. The kids sneak out of the house, deflating the ice cream truck tire as they do. This forces Chili and Iceman to seek the services of a repairman, whose actor I desperately hope is actually Mexican because, uh... Yeah, what? man, we used to get way high in the sky there, man. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, you know, like, uh, hang gliding. And then we would land and do meth. While on the bus, Jackson and Olivia subtly slip in a discussion of this film's deeper theme. Do you think humans are causing global warming? I just think people should clean up after themselves. Every kid knows that. Well, I think that's kind of an oversimplification of global warming. Like, not really placing enough blame on all the billionaires who are destroying the environment just to help their corporations. Because they don't care, there's probably a ship that they can escape Earth on. You know, leaving all of us pores to suffer in the climate dystopia that they created. It's like, I actually want to have kids. Like, that's something that I want for myself. But if the state of the economy wasn't bad enough, I fear they'll resent me for forcefully bringing them into an already dying world. <laughs> anyway, woohoo! The kids discover the only way to Clueiston is by hang glider, so they try renting one from this southern guy. I gotta go to the bathroom, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get you high in the sky. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Y'all don't go nowhere, you hear? Get her done. How did they get so many grown adults to agree to be in this movie? Do older generations just lack self-awareness? Do they not fear cringe? <laughs> My lord? You gotta get me up into the sky. You're not getting high in the sky today, sir. Are you trying to say I'm too tall? No, no, I would never. It's just that I'm racist. So Jackson and Olivia actually take off in the hang glider and every shot of them actually flying is from afar. So I don't know if they actually put the kids in the hang glider, but I'm not sure. The person on the back there looks pretty small. You think they got an adult stunt double Olivia's size? I don't know. I don't know. They land and find the next clue, but the ice cream men catch up with and kidnap them. I like Jackson's pretend resistance there. Like he can't fight back too hard because the AI script said they get captured. Realizing the kids are missing, Brad calls Janet, who's in Fiji with her new boyfriend. Who's calling me in Fiji? Ugh, it's the schmuck. And I'm pretty sure the waiter at the resort is dubbed over with somebody else's voice. Fiji Ouija, the spirit of spirits. I'm just glad the dubber didn't try for an accent. Jackson and Olivia lead the ice cream men to a fake clue location before ditching them and trying to rent a boat to get to the real clue. We need to get to the beach. They're closed. You'll have to get there by sea. We'll take a boat then. I don't rent boats to children. Not since that episode of This Is Us where Nikki killed that kid on the boat in Vietnam. I don't care if you don't get it. That joke was for me. But they managed to get a boat by doing the two kids in a trench coat gag. Aye, we like a boat. Aye, a boat. Clearly you're over 18. Meanwhile, Brad goes to a spy agency for help tracking the kids down. Olivia likes unicorns? Uh, mermaids? Uh, should, couldn't, would? You know, humanity's greatest piece of literature, better than the Bible. The kids and the ice cream men have a battle at sea culminating in the kids' engine blowing up, so that when they arrive ashore, a nearby island, their faces are covered in grease. And this is true. When I first found this movie, I skipped through it to see if it would be good material and stumbled onto this scene out of context, which made me think that at one point, the movie took a very racist turn. Well, at least we're on an adventure. A terrible adventure. That's it. What, we some kind of... Terrible adventure. They find another clue that tells them to go to Key West, and they can only get there by, finally, plane. Hey kids, welcome to the Conk Republic Air Force Tours. How can I help you today? We need a tour to Key West. 
But I happen to know from my research that this guy who sells them the plane is Kel Mitchell, the director and their real life dad. He needs a little FaceTime too, can't let the kids have all the glory. Actually, it's Kel Thompson. Kel Thompson. Kel Mitchell is the guy from um, Keenan and Kel and Good Burger and all that whose name's also in my brain because I decided to be a useless human being. This is actually Max B. This is actually Max B. That gag would have worked so much better if he only said it once. Why did he say it twice? They take off and the ice cream men try and shoot them down with a sandwich launcher on top of the truck. In other words, murder them. The ice cream men try and murder the kids. That's pretty dark, especially considering this movie was written by their dad. But they escape, and the kids, the ice cream men, and Brad, who's with the spy lady on a jet ski, all head to the same location in a really long montage. <laughs> because all these vehicles were very expensive, so they gotta contribute at least 15 minutes to the movie's runtime. Chili and Iceman arrive at the location of the next clue, which is surrounded by a crowd of confused extras. And when it cuts in closer to them, there are two digital people on the side of the screen so that you know the crowd's still there. Oh, hold on a sec, my friends are over. Hey guys, how are you? They can't find the clue, but the kids show up and are able to. Their dad and the spy lady then arrive to take the kids home. Hey, hey, you still owe me a balance. You didn't do anything, I did all the work. What do you mean, I got us all the way here. Great, just because they wanted to have that one visual gag of the spy lady dumping water out of her boot, the actress probably now has a page on Foot Finder. Or at least she will after I finish making it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I make a lot of jokes. I make a lot of jokes. Sometimes. I might go too far, okay? That night, Olivia explained this to her dad they were solving the puzzle in order to save the house. I don't want you guys to worry about that. We're gonna figure something out. Like maybe we'll start a family vlogging channel. Like what do you think of this as a title? Fortnite kid pranked by angry mom with PS4 trap. Free V-Bucks in PS4. Chili, who is waiting outside their house with Iceman, then does this hunch a muncha dance and... Make it freeze, make it squeeze, make it extra tasty, please. Sprinkle, sprinkle, ha! Follow your hunch and get munch. Why do I even make videos? Make it freeze, make it squeeze, make it extra tasty, please. Sprinkle, sprinkle, now you're crunchy. Against their dad's wishes, the kids find the location of the next clue and take a train to get there. Brad wakes up the next morning to find them gone, and we find he apparently sleeps in an old-timey cap and gown. Jackson? Olivia? Their real dad when he needs them to film a scene for this movie, but they're too tired? Brad teams up with Janet and takes an electric scooter to go save the kids. Why did I immediately wonder if there's an outtake of them crashing? What's wrong with me? Meanwhile, at a castle where they believe the final clue to be located, Jackson has an epic duel with Chili. And at first I wondered if Jackson was too old to find this scene cool. Like, I couldn't imagine him going up to his friends and saying, Hey, look at this scene of me sword fighting an ice cream man. But then I remembered that this is a video my friend and I made when we were 14. I guess I misremembered what age the crippling insecurity set in and never went away. But the kids at last managed to find the final clue and win the competition. We won. 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 My friend and I, after splitting an entire container of melatonin and not dying. The billionaire then shows up with their winnings, as well as their parents, who explain that now they're gonna make an effort to be better co-parents. You mean you two came up here together? We did. And we're going to be doing a lot more together, too. Move over the Fablemans, Mrs. Doubtfire, Kramer vs. Kramer, Marriage Story, and The Squid and the Whale. This is now cinema's greatest divorce story. 
Why are there so many of them? Then there's a little gag where Chili blows up the ice cream truck. <laughs> you can tell that's just a PNG of the ice cream truck, like if he moved his hand through the middle, this would happen. Then Olivia recounts her summer to the class and the movie ends. Well, here's a story of how we took action, won a million dollars, saved our house, and got our dad a job. Cause action not in action was less than we were taught. A million dollars? I can't wait to hear this story. So that was The Terrible Adventure, and even though it's always sketchy involving your kids in something you may benefit from financially, I hope that the experience of making this movie was nothing but positive for these kids because, believe it or not, I actually enjoyed watching it. It's the type of movie that's low budget enough to be like really out there and bizarre, but still has enough money to like surprise you with a bunch of random set pieces. And I don't know why more people haven't seen it, like didn't their dad, Kel, run some sort of marketing campaign for it? You watch any good movies lately? What? Yeah, I've watched really good movie. One really good movie lately. No, not Top Gun. Even better. Better than Top Gun. It's called The Terrible Adventure. Oh. Well, that explains it.